the book is Tourism Marketing, Performance Metrics, and Usefulness Auditing of Destination Websites. It's a very long title. And the point is, most uh, marketing uh, at firms do, d uh, simply does not pay enough of attention to evaluation of the, uh, the implemented strategies that they've uh, uh, put in place. And so the purpose of the book uh, is to come up with useful metrics to evaluate uh, destination brands, uh, specifically their websites. And um, this is uh, uh, pretty much the first time that we've had several studies available in one location in this book. Uh, and Lauren uh, Frick, one of the students in the course, who's a senior uh, in the Carroll School of Management, uh, did a very interesting study, and uh, why don't we ask Lauren to report on it to us, if she would. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my analysis was on uh, three different tours and websites specifically for the Mediterranean region, and the three uh, destination websites that I looked at were for Valencia in Spain, Marseille in France, and Genoa in Italy. Um, so I really did, using a performance audit rubric, I looked at those three cities, um, really analyzed their websites to see, you know, what kind of quality information they were giving to visitors who were looking at that website um, when they were deciding which destination that they wanted to travel to in the Mediterranean region. What made you pick those three particular destinations? Um, it was definitely something that was of a personal interest to me. Um, I had recently just traveled to Europe for the first time. I hadn't been to any of those three cities, and they're all three cities that I'm interested in traveling to, hopefully within the next few years after I graduate. Um, and they were all located on the water in the Mediterranean. And what are some of the metrics that you examined? Uh, so I, I, I had a rubric that had 14 different things that we analyzed that would range from whether you could book a hotel on the website um, like on the actual website for that region, whether there was, you know, information about social networking, a Facebook, a Twitter, uh, whether you could email someone and ask questions of someone that works in the tourism office for that city, um, things such as flights and, and, and other different train systems, whether they had links to those type of information on the website. And did you find some differences between the, the three cities in yes, performance? Yes, definitely. Um, Valencia definitely was the most was the, it was the website that offered the most information, um, which was interesting because it was the most recently made website. Uh, Genoa's website was actually the first to be made, um, but we found that, or through the, through the study, I found that they really didn't offer a lot of information. They had absolutely no social networking available. Their website was only translated in two or three different languages. Um, just overall wasn't a lot of detail, and also wasn't really aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Valencia's website had a lot of bright colors, very interesting to look at, um, had this option where you could send an e-postcard to someone Neat. to let them know that you were interested in even visiting Valencia. Um, so really made it user-friendly and, and interactive for the person who was visiting the website. Did they have videos on all three websites? Uh, I recall that there was videos on the Valencia and Marseille website. I don't believe there's any videos on the Genoa website. Mm -hmm. Could you picture yourself in, in, at the website in terms of actually being in the website as a customer? Did, did you see yourself in some of the material? I did in the Valencia. The Valencia one, as I mentioned, had, had a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. The, the other two were really kind of lacking in, in those, that kind of a substance. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so <coughs> what, uh, what would you recommend uh, based upon the findings of your study to the to, to those companies, to the people running those websites. Well, um, I would really suggest that Marseille and Genoa's tourism websites really kind of look to Valencia as, as a model or the standard of what they should be doing in this current era. Um, they definitely need to make sure they're on board with the, the social networking phase that's, that's <coughs> huge in our generation now. Um, and also make sure that they do kind of upload those videos so people can really get a feel of what it would actually be like to visit there before they go and spend all their money to travel to that city. So Valencia is going to be very happy with your, with, your study. With my, my study, exactly, yes. That's great, <laughs> that's great. So the, uh, the course that uh, Lauren uh, uh, has taken uh, is uh, Marketing 630, uh, Tourism and Hospitality. And uh, we have a final question for Lauren's uh, strengths and weaknesses of doing such a project in a course, uh, uh, good points, bad points, and what, how would you summarize such a project, Lauren? Well, I mean, I think doing this project overall was a really great experience. Um, I had never done anything like it before in another type of class. 
Um, and obviously I'm very excited that my study was able to be published and that it's definitely a great boost for a graduating senior to be able to put on their resume and talk to um, with potential employers that they, I've had this experience and this opportunity. Um, I guess I would say that some of the limitations specifically were um, you know, that I only really looked at three travel websites and there was obviously a lot more information that I could have considered when looking at those three websites or even, you know, comparing them to other websites in a different area of, of the nation or of the world. Um, but, but overall, I really do think it was a very positive experience and I'm very glad that I took the class and was able to participate in, in this type of study. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. The big finding in the study, I think, is that uh, uh, competing brands actually perform substantially different, some very, very uh, high, high performance, some low performance. And uh, just to give you an indication, one of, the, one of the studies that were done by the students in the Marketing 630, which is Tourism and Hospitality, uh, was um, uh, compared Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Francisco's performances in terms of their uh, website marketing. And the study was done by uh, Carlin Wolsey, and uh, you can read all about it in the book by Carlin. And uh, she found, for example, uh, among these three cities, Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Francisco, one of them uh, had extremely high performance, and it was San Francisco. And one of the cities did not even have Spanish on their website. You couldn't click and, and actually um, uh, go to a Spanish uh, language website, which is uh, rather uh, shocking if you think about it, given that Mexico is so close and so many tourists come from uh, Mexico. And uh, I'll let you uh, take a look at the book to see which one it is, but um, it's not San Francisco. Uh, another um, study by Kathleen Dugan and Joe Lang is the six drivers of high user satisfaction of tourism websites. And in this, study, uh, uh, Kathleen compares Maine, uh, Massachusetts, and New York's uh, direct marketing strategies using their websites. And again, one of the uh, three websites does extremely well, and uh, one of them uh, does rather poorly. And I think it makes for fascinating reading. And we just, we just heard from Lauren Frick about uh, three Mediterranean cities, and then another study is by Patricia Canals, and she compares countries, France, Spain, and Portugal, in terms of their website uh, marketing performance. And Christopher Dion uh, does a study on comparing four countries, including uh, Russia and uh, Poland um, and uh, Japan and uh, Thailand. And I think it would be very wor worth reading about. And just to mention one more, uh, Amy uh, Kandorp doesn't look at websites. What she looks at is um, advertising campaigns, uh, looking at consumer-generated advertising, which is very, very interesting uh, phenomenon. Uh, and she compares Starbucks consumer-generated advertising with Chipotle's consumer-generated advertising. And uh, this is amazing marketing um, campaigns that these companies sponsored that Consumers actually created ads for the companies that ended up receiving, uh, in some cases, uh, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, hits on YouTube. And Chipotle's campaign was extremely successful, very, very low cost. And an analysis is provided by Amy in the book. Uh, so uh, I'm excited about the, um, about the students' responses to this uh, way of uh, taking a course. It was very hands-on, and both uh, the students and myself were learning uh, from uh, the material, and it was uh, actually uh, using new metrics and finding uh, uh, surprising results uh, that was uh, publishable uh, in this particular series, which is a series entitled Advances in Culture, Tourism, and Hospitality Research. And the book is volume four in the series. Well, the method to, uh, uh, to do the research was for the students to decide on what particular uh, level that they wanted to look at. Did they want to look at the country level for evaluate uh, brands, uh, countries by brands, or did they want to look at uh, state and province level to evaluate, say, Maine, Massachusetts, and New York? 
and brand performance, brand marketing performance, or did they want to look at the city level? And uh, uh, Lauren uh, Frick looked at the city level of uh, three, um, three cities in Europe, uh, Genoa, Marseille, and uh, the Italian city. Uh, uh, trying to think what it is, but uh, and then to come up with um, um, a list of checklist items to evaluate the uh, the uh, three cities. Oh, Valencia, Valencia, Genoa, and Marseille were the three cities. Sorry. Um, so the point is, in marketing, in any activity, you can you can um, often forget to do certain critical uh, activities. Uh, uh, in, in implementing the strategy that you've planned. So it's very important to have a checklist, just like on a, on a flight, a pilot would go through a, a rather extensive checklist. Uh, there was a recent article in the uh, New Yorker about the importance of checklists. So uh, such things as having a video, having uh, m several languages spoken at the website, um, uh, being able to book a room at the website, uh, uh, key events during the year. Uh, website marketing has become extremely important and uh, the, the increases in actual purchases at websites has been phenomenal in the past uh, uh, two decades. So uh, we developed a, a checklist of students and I which they applied to evaluating these websites uh, and the key hypothesis that they tested wa uh, was that the cities or, or states or countries would differ substantially that, uh, and these were brands that were competing with each other in the marketplace for customers. And we try to be very concrete in the questions. It wasn't, uh, it, the checklist didn't have uh, things such as uh, did it make you feel warm and happy. There were very, very concrete uh, issues that the students examined at these websites. The main reason the research is important is that uh, oftentimes the implemented strategy is very different from the uh, planned strategy. Uh, another aspect of such research is, uh, is to learn the uh, polling power of the website. Do, do, uh, do uh, consumers actually um, uh, use the website to uh, book activities, to, um, to uh, uh, actually plan uh, their trips and uh, that would be um, uh, a second phase of this type of study to, um, to actually uh, uh, involve the students in, uh, in uh, studying how participants uh, of, 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 of people who use the websites actually go about using uh, the websites. So we would, for example, ask persons to go to the websites and record their activities as well as uh, how long they play on the, uh, uh, how long they play uh, and do activities at the websites. What I think is going to happen uh, with these websites is they're going to turn into interactive games um, and it would be basically you're, you're going to be able to uh, uh, visit the website without, uh, visit the brand, in other words say France, without actually leaving so you, you, what, what is really coming is you're going to be able to uh, 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 tick or check certain boxes as to what type of visit you want to have. Do you want to have a, a romantic trip to Paris? Do you want to be uh, visit danger in Marseille? And uh, do you want to uh, end up being killed or be saved, become a hero? And you're actually going to... Um, uh, 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 experience uh, activities and scenes at that particular country. And this is the, the coming thing. It's not really here yet, but I really see this coming. And if you've ever heard of a game called Club Penguin that 10-year-olds and 13-year-olds play, it's actually a, uh, a tourism website where you go to these different uh, fantasy uh, parts of uh, Club Penguin and participate and you, you collect objects, you collect uh, points that, where you end up buying things. I really think that we're going to see competition among brands, uh, real brands like Paris and Marseille and Genoa uh, uh, doing these interactive games 
And what that's going to do is uh, you're going to uh, uh, experience uh, the brand and that's going to affect, I think, your future travel behavior. And uh, it's going to be a very powerful um, uh, 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 marketing step that these brands take. Of course, some, some naysayers are going to say that doing so will, uh, will um, allow the person to experience the, uh, uh, the destination with, with, uh, and never travel to the destination. It'll be a purely a, um, an avatar type of a trip, and, uh, such as uh, going and seeing the pyramids by going to Las Vegas. Now, uh, I don't think that's really going to be the outcome. I really think uh, the brand is going to imprint the consumer's mind where eventually th they feel they owe it to themselves to make this trip that they've experienced online but not in real life. So that's kind of ex exciting news, I think, of what's going to happen in, uh, in tourism marketing. Uh, organizations, a uh, uh, question would come up is what should they do based upon uh, results such as uh, in studies in, in this particular volume in the series. And I think the answer is they actually have to have evaluation programs where they evaluate their performance objectively uh, uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, actual features at their website in comparison to competitors, uh, as well as uh, evaluate uh, the holding power of consumers of, of their, their website versus competing websites. For example, just asking some, some consumers to go to these three or four websites and uh, uh, do the following five activities at each website and then give them some activities to do and then see how long they stay at each of the websites. And it's, it's research like that, that, the one thing you want to make sure you, you don't do is identify who's sponsoring the this, this study. You don't want to say, you know, we represent the state of Massachusetts and we want to know how our website is performing. Uh, you, you want to uh, not commit such uh, sponsor identity bias in your research. Most, uh, most um, researchers attempting to evaluate websites do it on a one to five basis, such as uh, did, the, did the website provide you with the information you need one to five. These studies don't do that. These studies look at specific issues such as can you find, uh, how many languages can you find available at, at this website? Uh, d is, there, is there videos at the website? Uh, uh, is there um, uh, 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 a, tweeter, a tweeter application at the website? And, and so very, very concrete questions. And so this is rather different from, from, uh, from pu other published studies. I think f to improve upon the research, I think you really do need to also do experiments where you, uh, where you uh, study the amount of time consumers actually spend at the websites and, uh, and have them do certain tasks, such as book an activity. Uh, for example, uh, there's some wine festivals in different parts of the country. So you could, you could, you could say to the respondent, please go online to find three or four uh, wine festivals, one on the East Coast, one in the South, and one on the West Coast, and try to book um, a, a rooms and also activities during the wine festival. And then actually record uh, uh, in the form of eye tracking studies, in the form of length of time, their success rate of booking, how long it took them to book, the failure rates. So I, I think that would be the next step.